Okay, here's going to be a few more practice problems for my review problems for calculus worksheet. So in number 21, we've got this inequality, 4, 4x less than, 2x plus 1, less than or equal to 3x plus 2. And this is actually a problem that I kind of made up off the top of my head and didn't really think about because, A, you probably won't see something like this in calculus. And B, I don't really remember encountering a problem like this anywhere. But then I started thinking, how would you solve this type of problem? Well, you've basically got three inequalities to solve. You've got 4x less than 2x plus 1. You've got to solve the inequality 2x plus 1 less than or equal to 3x plus 2. And then we also have to solve um, the inequality. We want 4x. It's going to have to be less than 2x plus 1, which is less than or equal to 3x plus 2. So 4x would have to be less than 3x plus 2. That's basically what's going on here. So, okay, so to solve the first um, inequality, we can just subtract 2x from both sides. We'll have 2x less than 1. And if we divide, that says that x is going to have to be less than 1 half For the second inequality, well, we can subtract 2x from both sides. So that'll leave us with 1 less than or equal to x plus 2. And then if we subtract 2 from both sides, we'll get that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And from the last inequality, well, we can simply subtract 3x from both sides. And it says x has to be less than 2. So we're trying to satisfy all of these inequalities. It has to be less than 1 half to satisfy the first inequality. It has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 to satisfy the second inequality. And the third one says it has to be strictly less than 2. You're basically looking for the overlap of all of those regions. And the overlap would be between negative 1 up to 1 half, including negative 1 but not 1 half. So the solution set would simply be from negative 1 up to 1 half. So maybe that problem will help, maybe not. I basically wanted to do it for my own, my own benefit. So there you go. So, okay, 22. We've got x to the third greater than x. Again, in general, for inequalities, you just make one side equal to 0. So I'm going to start off by subtracting x from both sides. Um, try to factor. So notice I can factor out an x. I would have x squared minus 1 left over. I can then factor x squared minus 1. That's the difference of perfect squares. So I'll have x minus 1 times x plus 1 greater than 0. And now, again, if you think about the corresponding equation, well, if we set x equal to 0, we'll just get the solution of x equals 0. If we set x minus 1 equal to 0, we'll get the solution of x equals 1. And if we set x plus 1 equal to 0, we'll get x equals negative 1. So just like before in the other examples, my other inequalities, I'm just going to make a number line. And we have to test a point from each interval. So I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. So maybe if we use x equals negative 10. Okay, I'm going to put it into the factored form. Again, I'm asking myself, is it greater than 0 when I substitute it in? So we'd have negative 10, negative 10 minus 1 is negative 11. Negative 10 plus 1 will be negative 9. A negative times a negative times a negative is going to be a negative. That's not going to be greater than 0. Let's see, maybe we can use x equals negative 1 half. If we use x equals negative 1 half, we'll have, well, negative 1 half. We'll have negative 1 half minus 1. We'll have negative 1 half plus 1. Well, that's going to be a negative multiplied by a negative multiplied by a positive. Two negatives make a, I, I wrote negative 1 there. I shouldn't have done that. That's going to be negative 3 halves if we actually compute it. But we have a negative times a negative times a positive, which is going to be a positive. A positive number is certainly greater than 0, so those values between negative 1 and 0 works. If we use x equals 1 half, well then I'm going to have 1 half. I'll have 1 half minus 1. 1 half plus 1, that's going to be a positive multiplied by a negative multiplied by a positive. 
positive times a negative is going to be a negative. Multiplied by a positive will still be a negative. Well, a negative number is not greater than 0. And say if we use x equals positive 10, well, then it'll be positive times a positive times a positive, which will certainly be greater than 0. So anything greater than 1 also works. So our solution set in this case will be from negative 1 to 0. Again, parentheses because the endpoints don't satisfy the inequality. Union from 1 to positive infinity. All right, so again, be careful. A lot of people might start off by dividing both sides by x, and that does not work, okay, because then you wouldn't get this, this point of x equals 0. So be careful about that. Um, don't make that mistake. Don't divide both sides by x. Last but not least, 23. Well, this one's kind of nice. It's already factored for us. We've got x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. We want that to be less than 0. Well, again, if you think about the corresponding equation, if you set the first factor equal to 0, we would get x equals 1 as a solution. And then we would have x equals 2 as a solution from the second factor, x equals 3 from the third factor. Again, since this is strictly less than, I know that none of those values will work. Let's see, if we plug in x equals 0, we would have negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3. Two negatives make a positive, but another uh, multiplied by another negative will give us a negative number. Well, that's certainly less than 0. So every number smaller than 1 is going to work. Maybe if we use x equals 3 halves, that's between 1 and 2, right, 1.5. So we'll have 3 halves minus 1, which is going to be a positive number. We'll have 3, at, 3 halves minus 2, which is going to be a negative number. 3 halves minus 3 is also going to be a negative number. Two negatives make a positive. Multiplied by another positive is going to give us a positive number. And that's not going to be less than 0. So numbers between 1 and 2 don't work. Let's say x equals 5 halves, or 2.5. So we've got 5 halves minus 1, 5 halves minus 2. So again, it's just very tedious. You're just checking, just, just a, checking a bunch of signs, really. That's going to be a positive multiplied by a positive multiplied by a negative number, which is going to give us a negative number. Well, a negative number is certainly going to be less than 0. So numbers between 2 and 3 work. So again, notice I'm not really doing the arithmetic. I guess I sort of am. I'm really just more thinking about signs. Last but not least, if we take a number larger than 3, if we plug it in, well, it's going to be positive times a positive times a positive, which is going to give us a positive number, which is not less than 0. So the solution set in this case will be from negative infinity up to 1, again, parentheses, union from 2 to 3, again, parentheses on both of those.